Thank you, Ritul, for this uh, wonderful conference. And uh, we hope that uh, pregnancy and diabetes uh, topic will be covered in so many states. And uh, uh, this will become a very important area where we need more awareness, in fact, and uh, at the government level also, because I worked with the National Health Mission in Uttar Pradesh. So we created a lot of data on GDM. So uh, I regards my mentor, Dr. Shashaya. So with this, I begin by marker in GDM, where do we stand? So before the start of the topic, I would just introduce that uh, this is a completely a new area where uh, much of the trial has not been done, but we have identified uh, some of the markers. Uh, and uh, in the next stage, we will be uh, piloting some studies and on that basis, we can say that which marker is able to predict the GDM. So as we already know, the diabetes is rampant in South Asia, especially in India, okay, where around 25% uh, women have impaired glucose tolerance and uh, GDM in the pregnancy. So this is the data which is very skewed in India because if you see the rural area, the GDM prevalence is still lower. And in the urban, this is just double. Okay, so this is very important. Now, uh, this, this can be very important for the GDM management in the future. Okay, so what are the markers we are already doing and uh, what needs to be done in the future for the prediction of the GDM? So there are conventional predictors, then second amino acids and fatty acids profiling, then there are inflammatory markers, whole blood parameters and novel markers. So we will be concentrating on the novel markers. So th there, are, there are basically not much study in this area, but uh, as we see, even in the ACOG guidelines, if the blood sugar is less than 84, then we say that the GDM is nil. Okay, so this is the safest limit of the blood sugar in the pregnancy, less than 84 fasting. So now there's a C-peptide, which is also very, very important because C-peptide level is linked with the hyperinsulinemia and hyperinsulinemia is the cause of NCD as Dr. Shashaya already targeting the hyperinsulinemia in the pregnancy with the metformin. So okay, HOMA IR study we have already done and this we have already proved that for type 1 and GDM this is a predictor. SMBG has an inverse relationship with the insulin resistance, okay, and this is also very well-known fact. Leptin is again a, a hormone secreted by fat cells in the, during the pregnancy, ovaries, placenta, and this is also a well-known marker. Now, ad adiponectin study is also from India. I think that was the first study by Dr. Shishaya long ago, published in the uh, diabetes care. So adibinoctin is protective. Now this is the whole scenario where from these biomarkers comes from. Okay, there is, so there is a, in skeletal muscles, liver, fat, and the placenta. So from these organs, okay, we need to target. Okay, like insulin sensitivity is decreased in the muscle, glucose uptake is decreased, IRS1 expression is decreased, inflammatory response of the marker is increased, and Reactive oxygen species are also increased. So this is in the skeletal muscles. In the liver, again, insulin sensitivity, gluconeogenesis is increased, SHBG is decreased, inflammatory response is increased, and ROS is increased. So again, in the fat, we know adiponectin, leptin, they are very, very important pro-inflammatory markers. In the placenta, again, insulin sensitivity is important, placentin, leptin, pro-inflammatory markers, and fetal growth. So this whole lead to a neurohumoral dysfunction and the inflammatory response, which give rise to oxidative stress and insulin resistance in the hypoglycemia, and ultimately GDM is basically, it comes during the start from the first trimester. It's present in the, all the trimester, but presently the, because guidelines does not support first trimester, so we should stress on the first trimester. So there are these pathway. So common 
markers adiponectin hcrp which is not specific for the gdm or leptin so this is the common now there is a signaling pathways okay so there is the insulin signaling pathway because as we already know in gdm there is not only the resistance which is increased but there is a secretory defect of also of the insulin so this is the whole thing that it is irs1 level skeletal muscles pathway this is also disturbed then uptake of the oxygen sorry uptake of the sugar is also decreased okay and absorption of the sugar is increased so uptake and absorption we have to understand and these are the markers which are elevated and on the right side there is a marker which is decrease okay this is the pathway so now this is a very very important slide where we understand which particular marker we have to study in which trimester okay so if you want to hit because now there are not many study but we can target in the first trimester what are the markers we have to study okay because they are disturbed now you you can see a spectrum where adiponectin is throughly from first to last trimester last trimester it is decrease okay so this is a guidance to us that which study we need to do in which trimester to predict the gdm now fasting insulin again very important c peptide okay huma ir shbg leptin adiponectin so this is what we have studied till now now there is a amino acid and fatty acid profiling so as we already know that amino acid from placenta to the fetus is increased in the gdm okay so there is a shallowing of the uh, placenta and there is a microsomia due to amino acid transfer so this is we already know so what are the amino acids we have to target that we will see later on so again there is a fatty acid profiling which is increased like several study have shown that the placental uptake of the lcpu fatty acid that is long chain polyunsaturated fatty acid that is basically decrease and saturated fatty acid is unaffected okay so this so these are the profiling of different amino acids valine leucine isoleucine so they are increased during the pregnancy then aromatic amino acids sulfur containing amino acids so they are all increased now fatty acid profile that is not certain in which uh, trimester we have to target okay crp is ag again not specific to the gdm so these are the blood profiling we have seen that what are the blood counts which particular blood count we have to see in the gdm so platelet count is increased but it is not very sensitive leukocyte is increased again it is not very sensitive but if we see the ratio of pro inflammatory helper cells and the inflammatory cells then that is also predictor of the gdm cd3 cd4 and cd8 that is also increased in the gdm now bnp afamine fg21 okay ang pl6 so they are the new markers okay so study have to select these markers to evaluate that whether we can do it in the first trimester first trimester the prediction further on in second and third trimester okay so these are the diagnostic value so this is very important the sensitivity and specificity of the each marker varies okay so what whether we can combine two or three markers and we can increase the sensitivity that we have to see in the studies so tissue necrosing factor alpha and il6 is the main inflammatory markers which is involved and crp we already know okay so women have gdn significantly higher value of erythrocytes lower mean corpus of volume and mean corpus of hemoglobin value that we already know okay this is very important this is one study which has been recently done in the italy which shows that urea creatinine ratio okay and uh, the neutro uh, neutrophil sites okay if we combine both with the gestational nephropathy dysfunction okay then we can increase the sensitivity of the gdm prediction 
Okay. Suppose we take one marker, then the sensitivity and specificity is less. If we take two markers, then the sensitivity is more than 90%. So, so these new markers, alanine is a vitamin E binding protein found in the human plasma, which play a key role in anti-apoptotic cellular process. Okay. This can be, uh, this we can measure, then angiopoietin like protein 8, 8 Okay, and there is a recently published data on the placental lactogen. Okay, that is also important. And there is a various studies with the extra cellular vesicles, okay, which is very specific in the GDM. So again, the same uh, new markers we can highlight here, but we don't have much study, so we have to. Now, there is a one area which is very, very recent, and that is spectrometry. Okay, so spectrometry, mass spectrometry, we can done in the GDM, and these are the GDM proteomics workflow. So till now, not much study has been done into it, but how to do the study, this has been shown in this workflow. So if we want to study the various proteomics in the GDM, then we have to go through like this. Okay. So this is generalized summary of sample preparation, how we have to prepare the different samples from different area like uh, uh, placenta, fetus, meconium, okay, even urine sample, how we have to take. So this is the whole flow that how we will do the research. And till now worldwide there is not much research in this area, but there are some center, especially I mentioned earlier the Italy, uh, that they are doing a good job. So in the conclusion, so this area is a very challenging and early diagnosis, especially in the first trimester is very, very important because in second and third trimester, we are already knowing the blood sugar. Okay, so there are various limitations like sensitivity and specificity that we have to take into account. So there is a various micro RNA techniques, okay, which can be utilized in this area. So this is a promising area. And uh, we need a total study into this. So as I have already told you that the fasting insulin is the only thing which is very predictive. And now Dr. Shashaya has come with the 110 where the study is already progressing. And we have to see that how much we can predict. Thank you very much.